Smile Solutions, StraightSmileSolutions.com, and today we're going to talk about the difference between arch expansion in adults versus kids. And I've done some other videos specifically on like skeletal versus dental arch expansion, so it would probably be best if you watch that video first because this video will build on that video. To access that, you can just go to my YouTube channel, put in the search bar Straight Smile Solutions, takes you to my channel, which has a green banner. If you scroll down, you will see um, a bunch of different playlists and there's also a place where you can search by keyword. It's a little magnifying glass. You can type in arch expansion and the video should show up. Um, sorry, type in um, skeletal expansion probably or dental expansion, so expansion. Anyways, so now we're gonna specifically talk about adults versus kids. So just a quick recap, I have a lot of videos on expansion in kids, but to recap, the maxilla is made of two shelves. We call these the palatal shelves, okay? And it's got little fingers, like little interdigitations that are connected. It's a suture, okay? And it's very easy in growing kids to expand that suture. You essentially open the suture because it hasn't fused yet, and you can widen those shelves, which gives a better position for the tongue, gives a better airway, fixes the bite. So there's lots of reasons to do that. You should always do that as young as possible. Um, in adults, it's fused, okay? So the only way that you can get an arch bigger, okay, is a, either a compromised way, which is uh, tipping the arch, which you could do with aligners, you can do it with a quad helix, um, you can put an expander in, um, be it fixed or removable, and you're just gonna get tipping. So basically, it's just going to push down the palatal cuss and push up the buccal cuss. You can often get a posterior open bite. So it's really, to me, more trouble than it's worth because the bite gets does really funny things because the, the palate is not gonna split. The only way you can split the palate is surgically, okay? That involves either a MARPI or a SARPI surgery, none of which I'm interested in doing. I don't do, nor do I teach. So if you have questions, I'm the wrong person to ask. On my website, it does say we do not help with surgical procedures, especially surgical ortho way beyond the scope of what a GP needs to be doing. Not interested in teaching you. Um, a MARPI is a mini screw assisted um, palatal expansion appliance. So it's gonna look something like this, except it's gonna have screws that go into the palate, uh, either two or four screws. Um, personally, I think that orthodontists should not be placing these at all. I think these should be placed by surgeons, um, if that's what you wanna do who know what's going on and then you could monitor the it's basically distraction of the bones, you know, um, there are side effects and you can get hemorrhage and, and death, you know, by using this appliance if you don't know what you're doing. So this is not something to be taken lightly. And thus is a part of reason I'm not interested in learning it. I do know a few orthodontists that place them themselves. I think that's just wrong in many different levels. Um, I think your, your, your surgeons are going to be super mad at you too. And I don't, I don't think orthodontists are trained for that, but in any case, I like to keep my ortho practices historically um, blood free and shot free. <laughs> I'm not about that. Anyways, um, so yes, you can get it, but I don't think it's something you should learn to do. I think you should refer the patient out, um, find an oral surgeon who does that procedure, find an orthodontist who does that procedure. I am sure there's a way to look that up. Um, another way is called surgically assisted rapid palate expansion, expansion, and that's a SARPE, S-A-R-P-E. That's where you'll actually go into the operating room and they will cut the palate into two different pieces and move them across and then split them. Um, in fact, they'll even have an expander and they'll just, they'll pre-crank it and then they'll drop it in and then they'll plate it and stabilize it. So that, I have been, I have seen that surgery, I've, I've assisted on that surgery. Um, and I had a patient that had that surgery. So that I'm a little more comfortable with. Um, although, I mean, I think if they can start to perfect the MARPI, that's great. Um, it's just that, you know, we really were, we were like in the recovery room with the patient. We were really monitoring our patient's um, expansion with the, with the SARPI because they just cut it and then they, they crank it, you know, once they cut it. So anyways, hopefully that was helpful. So for those of you who are asking me if, if we can do expansion in adults, all it is is tipping. You can put an appliance in, you can put a quad helix in, you can use aligners. It's just tipping and it may not be a great idea. Like a lot of it really depends on the angulation of the teeth and how far we need to go. But sometimes it's better just to leave a posterior crossbite than to try to mess with it and get it incomplete and have it be unstable. So that's just my opinion. All right, thanks.